So in this next flowchart, we're going to continue our look at vertebrate circulatory patterns by titling the next flowchart Vertebrate Circulation Patterns 2. And here what we're going to be focusing on are amphibians. Amphibians are going to be a change to the fish circulatory pattern because amphibians are going to exhibit what is known as double, circula so double circulation. So here what we're going to have is a very distinctly different form of circulation and overall system that's allowing the amphibians to successfully move blood around their body. This is going to be summarized in figure 42.4b. So what do we have here? If we look at amphibians, we first want to look at their heart and how it compares to fish. The heart here is going to actually be with three chambers instead of two. The three chambers are going to be arranged in two atria and also one ventricle. So we have one ventricle, two atria, and atria is just the plural of atrium. So one ventricle. Let's see how this relates to the blood flow that occurs within amphibians. Amphibians are going to exhibit double circuit blood flow. So let's write that. Blood flow is equal to a double circuit. What does that constitute and how does that relate to the overall circulation that an amphibian exhibits as a vertebrate? In a double circuit form of blood flow, what we notice is that the ventricle, which is the pumping part of the blood, it's going to, uh, of the heart specifically, the ventricle pumps blood into what is known as a forked artery. More on this idea of a forked artery in just a second. And then as a sort of a fork in the road is presented, whenever you have a fork in the road, you have a chance to go one or the other way. The same idea for the blood is going to be seen in this double circuit of amphibians in which at this forked artery the blood is going to be directed into two separate circuits. That's what a fork in the road does, two separate pathways. The same thing is seen within amphibians and their double circuit due to this forked artery. Arteries are going to send blood away from the heart and the blood is going to be sent away to two separate circuits thus the name double circuit. Those circuits are as follows. One of the pathways that could be reached by the blood is known as the pulmocutaneous circuit. This root word of pulmo just is referring to the lungs and cutaneous is referring to the skin. And that's exactly where the blood is transported in this form and this circuit. What we have here is that the arteries, that forked artery is now going to transport blood away from the heart to the lungs and the skin of this amphibian. Here, once you're transported to the lungs or once you're transported to the skin, you have a site of gas exchange, meaning that this circuit will involve a good amount of oxygen being picked up and put into the blood. So the blood picks up O2 in this circuit and becomes O2 rich. And that's what we wanted. We need O2 rich blood to go to the rest of the body to help drive and keep those muscles working the way that they should. Keep the rest of the body overall working successfully. So once the blood picks up this oxygen, this circuit, the pulmocutaneous circuit, actually returns the blood to the heart, returns to specifically the right atrium. So there's a left atrium and a right atrium since there's two. So we can write this down as right and left. So what we're going to do is we're going to return it to the right atrium. Oh, ex actually, it's the left atrium in this situation to the left atrium via veins. Again, veins go towards the heart. Arteries go away from the heart. So an artery went away from the heart to the lungs, got oxygen, and went back towards the heart via a vein. Specific part of the heart that we're going back to is the left atrium. The systemic circuit is the other part of this double circuit. So let's take a look what happens here. In the systemic circuit, you're going to utilize this O2 rich blood and transport that O2 rich blood to the organs, to the systems. That's why it's called the systemic circuit. Transport O2 rich blood to the organs. Now why is that? Well that's because the organs need O2. And you've already picked up O2 by utilizing the pulmocutaneous circuit. Once you've transported O2-rich blood to the organs, 
the organs themselves will get the blood and you'll return this deoxygenated blood back to the heart to start this process all over again. So it returns blood to now what is known as the right atrium via veins as well. So whenever you're trying to go to an atria of the heart, it's always via veins because veins go towards the heart, arteries go away from the heart. So we have a pulmocutaneous circuit. Number one job is to get oxygen. Systemic circuit is number one job is to deliver oxygen to the place that needs it and bring it all back to the heart. Now what we notice here in this double circuit that's of focus to us is the following. Both atria, both the right slash left atria, pump this blood to a single vent into a single ventricle. Pump into a single ventricle. And the ventricle is what's mostly responsible for ensuring that blood is pumped to the rest of the body. But what we notice in amphibian hearts, structurally speaking, there's something known as a ridge in the ventricle. Sort of a, a, a little structure uh, known as a ridge that diverts and ensures that most of the blood, diverts means it puts it in the correct direction in this situation, diverts most O2 rich blood most of the O2 rich blood to the correct circuit. Because remember, there was this choice that was possible because of this forked artery. Either the ventricle is going to pump it to the pulmocutaneous or pump it into the systemic circuit. But what we notice is that because of this ridge in the ventricle, there's going to be a specific push of the O2 rich blood that has just came, come back from the pulmocutaneous circuit as seen here, circuit returned to the left atrium. Most of that, that, that blood that came back, that's O2 rich, is going to be diverted to the systemic circuit via this ridge. And what we also notice simultaneously is that the O2 poor blood, where do you think that's going to be diverted? That's going to be diverted into, the O2 poor blood is going to go into the pulmocutaneous circuit. Why is that? Well, the pulmocutaneous circuit is the site of the lung, where blood will reach the lungs and skin eventually, and it will get oxygen. It will get oxygenated. So we have this very specific diversion of both O2 rich blood and O2 poor blood to the specific areas that are needed. But on, what we notice also within amphibians is that sometimes there may be some sort of mixing. This is not a perfectly efficient system where all the O2 rich blood goes to the systemic circuit and all the O2 poor blood goes to the pulmocutaneous circuit. There's going to sometimes be mixing of O2 rich and also O2 poor blood. And so what we're going to notice now is that the amphibian actually can work with this inefficient mixing because the amphibian can actually, because of the mixing, adjust its circulation. It can adjust the diversion of O2 rich and O2 poor blood depending on the situation. Amphibians are those organisms that sometimes are going to be in the water and sometimes on land. So they actually are able to do the following. In water, <coughs> amphibians can send O2 rich blood, the O2 rich blood to the lungs. Now, why is O2 rich blood going to the lungs? Well, the lungs in water, amphibians, don't really have gills. So what they have to do is they have to make sure that wherever O2 rich blood is, it's going to a place that needs oxygen. And lungs definitely need oxygen to function correctly. In water, you make sure that all the O2 rich blood then goes to the lungs so that it can eventually go to the rest of the system in an oxygenated form. Whereas on land, when there's plenty of oxygen in the environment, not like in water because there's no gills in amphibians. On land, what you state is that in this situation, you are going to send the O2 rich blood, O2 rich blood to the skin because that's the area at which that can directly interact with what? The O2 rich blood can directly interact with the skin and over there you can have a direct diffusion event with the environment. So that covers our look at the double circuit. What we want to focus lastly on is the advantage of this. Why would amphibians need to do this or want to do this? The overall advantage of a double circuit and double circulation is that this allows for more vigorous blood flow. Blood flow in this type of circulatory pattern is going to allow for 
a more even and successful distribution of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood to the correct area. In essence, what we have here is the fact that blood itself gets repressurized. Because remember, in the fish, our problem was low pressure at those capillary beds. Here, what we have is repressurization that actually happens twice throughout the circuits, once through the pulmocutaneous circuit and once through the systemic circuit. Both times we're going to interact with this ventricle and the ventricle will push the blood to the specific circuits um, and repressurize that blood twice because of the two circuits that are present. That covers our look at amphibians. This is again summarized in figure 42.4b to make sure to look at that to really understand the direct circulation that we see. We'll look at the next uh, circulatory pattern by focusing on mammals and birds in the next video.